Hi, my name is Hogan and welcome to this tutorial where I'll be showing you how to make this blog step by step without skipping any steps. Now this isn't a video telling you what you should blog about or showing you how to build a blog using code. And it's definitely not a quick five minute tutorial either. So if you're looking for one of those things, then this video probably isn't for you. However, if you want to learn how to make a beautiful and simple blog without any technical skills, and you'd rather watch a full complete video that covers everything a beginner needs to know, then keep on watching. So this tutorial is perfect for anyone who wants to start a blog. It could be about food, fashion, travel, music, or anything you want to blog about. You can have your own dream blog up and running within a few hours. So let me give you a tour and show you how it works and what I'll be covering in the tutorial. Okay, so let's turn on the builder. Now I'm really excited because it's really cool. So basically you've got all these different type of modules that you can basically just drag and drop to any way you like on your blog. And you can virtually create any layout that you wish. And another cool thing is if we click on the options here, and if we go to styling, we're able to select a normal background image, a gradient background, or even a video background um, if you want to. Okay, all you need to do is upload the video, and upload your images and then you're pretty much good to go. Okay, changing text is really easy as well. So for example, you just double click the text module and basically just delete it like any text editor, change the text and then click on save. Okay, rearranging the layout is really easy as well. You can just drag it and drop it to where you want and you can even use the undo function which is really cool and you can also change the column layout as well. So you've got different column layouts here. For example, if you want it to move your sidebar to the left hand side, you can just drag it and then you can move it across. Okay, so it's really, really versatile. Um, but what makes it really, really awesome is the flexibility. Okay, so for example, we're able to customize the look of the header design just with a few clicks. Okay, so you don't need any coding or anything like that. And you can also change the post layouts for your blog posts. So it's really cool. You're able to create something really, really unique um, really quickly. And um, it's just really cool. Okay, so if we actually turn off the builder now, and um, I'm going to show you what I'm going to cover in this video. Okay, I'm going to move that one across first, maybe, and save it, and then close it. Okay, let's scroll back up. Now the first thing that I'm going to show you is how to add in your logo and also a fab icon. So it's like a little logo for your browser. And then I'm going to show you how to customize the header section, how to add in a slider and also where to get images for free. Okay. I'll show you how to add in text as well and edit text. And then I'll show you how to add in blog post. Okay. So I'm going to click on that blog post. Okay, so within this blog post, I'm going to be showing you how to add in links, images, um, video, as well as social media buttons so people are able to share it, and also how to add in this comment section so people can uh, leave a comment on your blog post. Okay, if we go back to the page here, I'll also show you how to add in a email subscription box so people can subscribe and then you can do email campaigns. And I'll also show you how to add in an image, a little profile image of yourself. I'll show you how to add in the most popular post with a thumbnail. I'll also show you how to connect your Twitter so you can display your latest tweets as well as adding in the Instagram feed. Okay, so that's not loading yet. I might refresh that. I'm also going to show you how to add in the Google AdSense as well, as well as um, just regular banner ads as well. So for example, the banner ad um, down here, I'll show you how to add in the Facebook like box as well. And then I'll show you how to add in your social media icons down here and customize the footer section, okay? Then I'm gonna show you how to create a really amazing about page. So basically when visitors come, they're really, really um, just amazed by it, okay? Scrolling down, it's really cool with the parallax scrolling effect. And then I'm gonna show you how to create a blog page. So with a blog page, you can select different layouts and I'll show you how to do that as well. And of course, I'll show you how to add in a gallery. So when, so if you have work to display, then um, people can click it and it opens up in a light box. Okay. And of course, I'll show you how to embed videos on your blog and also show you how to create a simple contact page, which includes a map, 
um, as well as a contact form so people don't need to go to the email address they can send you a message straight away okay so that's really cool and for this blog it's also completely mobile responsive as well so basically it resizes down um, perfectly for any device for iPads and mobile as well okay so that's really cool okay so before I begin uh, with an overview of what we need, you're probably wondering um, which platform are we going to be building on. So you've probably heard of Tumblr, Blogger, WordPress.com. Okay, WordPress.com is basically hosted on WordPress um, servers. Okay, so first I do want to say that these servers are easy to get started with, but there are several reasons why I don't recommend them to you. Okay, so the first reason is that you don't get your own domain name. So for example, you get a domain name yourname.tumblr.com so it's not professional and it's also hard to remember now secondly you don't own this blog or website okay so they're hosting it on their servers and if they don't like your content then they can delete that content okay so you can lose your work and if they close their service then it's really hard to transfer your blog to another platform as well and thirdly, it really lacks customizations and it has a lot of limitations. For example, limited opportunity to advertise, especially on the WordPress.com platform. Okay, and you have less control and functionality as well. And usually if you want to unlock those functionalities, then you need to get the premium version, which is more expensive in the long run anyway. So which platform are we going to be building on? Uh, the simple answer is we're going to be using wordpress.org okay so wordpress.org has a open source version of wordpress and it is used to create websites blogs and basically a lot of people use wordpress okay it's the most popular content management system out there um, you'll see fortune 500 companies use it such as ebay um, jay-z katy perry cnn forbes they use it for their blogs as well okay but top bloggers such as pat flynn from smart passive income he uses WordPress and recommends it. Also, uh, John Lee Dumas of Entrepreneur on Fire, he uses WordPress as well for his blog. And of course, for my website and blog, I use WordPress as well. So I highly, highly recommend it. And basically, right now, I'm gonna show you what we're gonna need to start building our blog, okay? So the first thing that you'll need is a domain name. And basically a domain name is your web address. So for example, google.com, then your one will be yourname.com. Now the second thing is hosting. Hosting is basically where all your blog files or website files are stored. So that way people are able to access that content 24 seven all around the world. So those two things are must haves, okay? And then we're gonna be installing WordPress and then we're gonna install the theme, okay? So what are the costs uh, involved? Okay, so for a domain name, normally it costs you around $13 a year, but I have a special coupon code, which is half price. So you're gonna get a domain for about $6. Okay, and hosting is normally $10, um, but with the coupon, I think it's less than $8 or so. So installing WordPress, the open source version, it is free, and the theme will be free as well. Okay, so the total, uh, cost will be around $13, I think less than $13 um, to get started. Okay, so we're pretty much ready to start with the tutorial. If you have any questions, make sure to drop it in the comment section down below. And let's see if we can get this video to about 200 likes. That would be really awesome. And thank you guys for that. Okay, so the first thing we'll need is to get hosting and our domain name. We can get that the same place. So there is a link down below um, this video. Okay, click on that link. That's a special discount link. Or you can just go to a browser and then you can type in HostGator forward slash promo forward slash Hogan. Okay, so this is a special discount link that HostGator has given me. And HostGator, I've been using them for about six years now to host my websites and blogs for my clients and myself. And basically they're fast, cheap, and reliable, okay? I have a lot of um, people who follow my other tutorials and I found that a lot of them have problems with these really, really cheap hosts. Um, because those cheap hosts are using shared resources, it makes the whole website like really, really slow. 
and sometimes the builder doesn't work either. So that's why I recommend uh, HostGator and you won't get any issues like that. And if you do get issues like that, then you can also contact their live chat support. So that's really, really awesome. And if you don't like it, then you also get a 45 day money back guarantee. Okay. So there are basically three different plans to choose for hosting. Okay. So the first one is the hatchling plan. Now the second one is the baby one and the third one is the business plan. So we're going to get the baby plan and the reason why um, I recommend the baby plan for you is because it is for the single domain and it is the cheapest option. Okay. So I personally have the baby plan because I have a lot of websites and blogs to host, but generally a lot of people will just have one domain. So to keep the cost low, uh, we might get the hatching plan. Okay, and you can upgrade later to baby plan if you want to. So click on buy now. Okay, so here you'll need to enter in the domain name that you want to purchase. So for example, it could be your name or something like that. So sometimes it might not be available and you need to be a little bit creative with it. Okay, so just click on the outside here. And normally I recommend just to get a .com domain. Okay, because that's the most popular one and that's the most popular extension that people type in. Now we're going to scroll down here and you want to uncheck this. Okay. We've selected the hatching plan. Now the billing cycle. Okay. So if you want to go month to month, then you can select this one and it's about 766. But if you go for 12 months, then you get a bigger discount. Okay. So you can go month to month or you can go for 12 month and get a bigger discount or even a bigger discount if you go for longer as well. Okay. So, what I recommend is getting the 12 month option because most of you who like start a blog, you're most likely going to be blogging for, you know, a year or more than that, you know, so you may as well get it cheaper. So we're going to put in a username here. So just type in a username and a security pin, scroll down. And basically I'm going to enter in my billing information. So I'm going to pause the video and do that. So you do that as well. Okay. Okay, so once you've filled in your details, then you'll need to select credit card or PayPal and fill in the credit card details if you're paying by credit card or if you select PayPal, then you'll be asked um, to sign into PayPal and confirm that payment. Okay, so let's scroll down here and you want to uncheck these services. Okay, because I have videos on my channel on how to actually secure your website as well as back it up as well. So you can do those things for free. And make sure the coupon code here is bonus code. Okay, so that gives you the bigger discount. And scrolling down, you'll see that the cost of the domain is $5.99 and the domain is $64. So the total will be $70.43, which is, I think, less than $6 per month. Okay, so if we scroll down here, then I want you to select I've read and agree to the terms and service services okay and then click on check out now and then after when you've checked out then you'll either get a paypal login we have to log in to um, your account and then pay the amount or you'll get a confirmation page that looks like this okay and then once you've got that confirmation then we'll need to go back to our email um, to check our details to log in to our cpanel to install wordpress Okay, so once you've gotten your hosting and your domain name, then go to your email address. Um, HostGator will send you an email, something like this, with basically your control panel URL and your username and password to log in to your control panel so you can install WordPress. So click on the URL and basically all you need to do is copy over your username and your password and then you'll need to paste it into this section here. So I'm just going to type mine in, okay? and then you'll need to log in. Okay, so once you've logged in, then you've got your cPanel, and this is basically where you install WordPress. So you can either click on WordPress installer here, or you can scroll down to software, and then click on quick install, and click on WordPress. Okay, so I'm gonna click on WordPress installer. Okay, then you'll need to select your domain name. Normally you just have one domain, but I've got a few. Um, so just select the domain name that you just bought, um, blogsitedemo.com. And for this part, um, leave this empty, and then you'll need to click on Next. Okay, so blog title, 
um, I'm, just, I'm just gonna put name of blog so you can change the title after if you want so don't worry about that um, admin user this is where you put in your username that we're gonna log in with first name last name and your email address okay make sure this one's correct because um, I'll also be sending details to this email address all right so click on um, you've agreed okay to the terms and service and after that just click on install now okay so installation will take about 30 seconds or, or a minute or so okay so once the installation is complete then what I want you to do is right click and open this link in a new tab okay so once you've done that then copy over this password okay and you should see this page here you might not see it depending on how long ago you just bought the domain and hosting if you just bought it, it might take 15 20 minutes um, worst case scenario probably about two hours so that HostGator can set you up on the back end okay so if, if you have any issues you can contact the HostGator live chat support and I'm pretty sure they can help you out so what I want you to do is click on admin login and basically you'll just need to put in your username and then paste over your password that you got from here paste that over and then you can log in okay what I like to do is basically I like to save this URL as a bookmark so I can just click on that bookmark and it will direct me straight to my login page okay so after that just log in and I also wanted to note that um, you can also just copy this URL for example copy that URL and if you paste that into here so um, WP dash admin and then click on enter that will also take you um, to your login page all right so right now this is your WordPress dashboard and uh, what we need to do is we're gonna click on no thanks okay and I'm gonna click on I don't need help because I'm gonna show you how to set it up manually that's important okay and it looks a little bit overwhelming there's a lot of things popping up but um, I can assure you it is pretty easy okay so just close all these things first just clean things up a little bit all right dismiss that minimize these things okay I don't really use these things and uh, you probably don't need them that often so this is basically where you can control your whole entire blog you don't need to log into your cPanel anymore okay so I'm gonna close that and I'm gonna visit our website okay so open that in a new tab and this is what basically your blog looks like at the moment so it's really really plain um, not much is going on but once we've installed the theme then it'll start looking pretty good so I'm gonna close that for now and the first thing that we'll need to do is configure some really basic settings uh, what I want you to do is hover over user like that and then click on your profile so I want to change the password because it's a little bit too long to remember so I'm going to click on generate password and click on hide and then set in the strongest password that you can remember I'm just going to click on confirm and then I'm going to update profile okay now once that is done then I want you to hover over settings click on permalinks and basically what we're doing here is we're making sure that the URL has the post title or the um, page title in the URL itself okay so we don't want a URL that looks like question mark p equals one two three because that's not good for search engines and people don't know what your page is talking about okay so I want you to select post name this is really important and click on save changes okay once that is done then we need to add some pages to your website or blog okay so click on pages here and pages are basically for example this home page is a page um, your about page your blog page and contact page those are all pages um, these ones are blog posts okay so it's a little bit different uh, with a page you can basically build any type of layout you want uh, with a post it's more of a like set sort of um, layout okay so okay so this is a post okay um, let's go back to pages and what I want you to do is I want to trash the sample page and then I want to go to trash and then I want to delete that permanently I want to add new pages so click on add new up here 
Okay, the first page I want to set in is home. Okay, just type in the title, and all you need to do is to publish that. Okay, and we need to do that for um, all the pages for this tutorial. So I click on add new, about page, publish, add new again, blog page, publish. And basically, you can add as many pages as you want. Okay, so click on Add New again, and the lucky last contact, and publish. Okay, so you've added in all the pages. Now, what we need to do is to add in the theme. So hover over Appearance and click on Themes. So the theme is basically like the skin um, of the website, and that includes the builder as well. Okay, so below this video, you'll see the description. Make sure to click on show more and you'll see the link to download the theme. Okay, so click on the link and basically that will automatically download to your computer. Just save it onto your desktop or something like that. And um, you can also download the um, images to follow along with the video as well. So you can follow along step by step. Okay, so if that link doesn't work, what you need to do is copy that link URL and basically just paste it into your browser, hit enter, and um, it should download. All right. And after that, um, this is what it should look like. Themify ultra .zip, that is your theme. And images blog .zip, that is where all the images are. Okay. Sometimes Safari might automatically um, unzip it, so it turns into a folder. And you don't want that, okay? You don't want to upload this folder. You want to upload the .zip, okay? So make sure that you um, right-click it and compress it back into the .zip, okay? So I don't need that anymore. Trash that one, okay? And um, for the images, you'll have to double-click it to unzip or um, whatever you do to unzip it on your computer. And basically, all the images are in here, okay? So I'm just going to arrange that by name. Okay, that looks a lot better. Okay, now uh, let's go back to the website and we need to upload the theme. So click on upload here and then click on upload theme again. Choose file and go to your desktop to where you've saved the theme and make sure you upload the .zip file, Themify Ultra. Click on open and install now. Okay, so you can see the progress bar for the upload on the bottom left. Okay, that'll take 30 seconds or a minute depending on your upload speeds. But some of you might have trouble uploading the theme and you might get an error message. Um, if you do get error messages, make sure to check out hoganchua.com forward slash FAQ. And basically, I have a whole section on problems that people commonly face and you can uh, sort it out. Okay, so especially um, this one you might get a message that says uploaded file exceeds the upload max file size and then you can check out this video and that will solve your problem. Let's go back here and let's wait for that to upload. Okay, once that is done, it should say uh, theme installed successfully. Click on activate and that will activate our theme for us. Okay, and the skins and demo will pop up. Okay, um, what I want you to do is click on the X here so just close that like that, okay? And you can close these things here, okay? You don't need that. And basically, uh, we can check the website. So open that in a new tab. And then you should see um, this, okay? So you can see the look of the, the website has changed and it looks a lot um, better now, okay? So once we've done that, uh, we need to go back to our dashboard and we need to go to plugins here. Okay, so click on plugins. And plugins are basically applications that um, enhance the functionality of our website. So basically, on your phone, you have applications such as uh, Instagram, or you might have some productivity apps. Um, basically, apps are for phones, plugins are for websites. Okay, so what I want you to do is to select all. Okay, these come pre installed, and I actually want to deactivate them. And click on apply because sometimes it might conflict with our builder and our website so I'm just going to deactivate them um, if you have any other plugins then 
that you don't use, then deactivate it as well, and then delete it. Okay, so deactivate it, then um, select them all again, and then select delete and apply. Okay, once that is done, then click on add new. We're going to install some new plugins that you need. Okay, so the first one will be Instagram feed. So that will be our Instagram feed that we're going to be adding. So this one will be by Smash Balloon with 300,000 active installs. Click on install now. And then what you can do is you can activate it now. And then after that, we're going to dismiss this message. Click on add new again. And then we're going to search for MailChimp. Oops for WordPress and basically this will connect our MailChimp account with WordPress and MailChimp is basically like a email uh, management system I guess so people are able to subscribe, subscribe to your list and then you're able to promote um, your products and things through email okay so this one will be up by Ibericode click on install now and activate Next one, click on add new again, will be social sharing by Danny. So this one will be um, basically the social sharing um, icons in your post. Okay, so it's a really lightweight plugin that I really, really like and um, it's really cool. So this one I buy Iberry Code again, click on install now and then activate it. Okay, then we've got the contact form and contact form basically allows people to um, send you a message without knowing your email. So contact form seven, hit on enter. And then this one will have a million installs. So install now, and then we want to activate it. Okay, add new. The last one will be easy Facebook black box. Okay, and then click on enter. And this one will be Sajid Javed. Hopefully I pronounced that right. Um, we're going to install now. And then we're going to activate it. Okay, awesome. Um, as you can see, a little pop-up pops up. Um, I normally just click on I've supported already. And it'll take you here. So don't worry about that. Um, what we need to do now is go to our website, okay, our homepage. And we actually need to set in our uh, static front page. So what that basically is, is if we actually uh, right click open that link in a new tab, if we click on the home um, page, then you'll see that it says forward slash home. Okay, that's your home page. But we actually want this home page to be just um, called blog site demo dot com. Okay, you don't want that forward slash home um, in the URL. So we need to set the static front page. To do that, we go to customize up here. Uh, just click on that. And then basically what you'll need to do, um, Themify options automatically pop up. You need to click on back here, static front page, a static page, and then select home. And then save and publish. Okay, once that is done, then you can actually close the customizer. And what you'll notice is that you're on the home page at the moment, and this is the home page, but now it's actually just called blogsitedemo.com and you don't have the forward slash anymore. Okay, so that's what you want, and you'll see the Themify Builder as well. So now what we're gonna do before we start building the um, our blog, uh, we need to set some basic theme settings. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna go back to our dashboard so click on your dashboard. Okay, then what I want you to do is hover over Themify Ultra, click on Themify Settings, and you'll be automatically directed to the General tab. So what I want you to do, scroll right down to the bottom, and you'll see Google Fonts. I want you to select uh, all Google Fonts. So basically you have more fonts to choose from, and you can click on Save. And then what I want you to do is click on the default uh, layouts tab. So you'll see that there is default archive post layout and also the single post layout. Um, don't worry too much about this now at the moment. I'll show you how to do that later on. So we're going to scroll right down to the default page layout. 
Okay, so for example, if we take a look at our blog now, uh, we'll open link in a new tab. We're on the home page at the moment, and this is the default page layout. So it has a title, and it also has a sidebar on the right hand side. So if we refer back to this, then we want to select no sidebar. Okay, and we also want to hide the title. So select yes, and you also don't want page comments on your pages. So select that. So if we click on save, and if we refresh that page, um, you should see that disappear. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. Your titles disappeared and you don't have the sidebar anymore. So you basically got a blank canvas to build your blog on. All right, and that's what you want. So let's go back to the settings. And I want you to go to theme settings. Okay, and then go to theme appearance and then go to header design. Okay, so at the moment we have this header design, as you can see. Now, I want to change it to the header top bar. It's just a nice simple one, but it's really optional. Um, you can change it later to whatever you want later. Okay, so you can do that. And what I want to do is I want to uh, remove the RSS link here. Okay, and I'm just going to click on exclude. And you can also exclude the tagline as well as the search. This is the tagline. This is the search. That is totally optional. And at the moment, um, I'm going to leave the sticky header. So basically what the sticky header is, it's basically um, if we're scrolling down a page, you'll see that the um, header navigation bar, it basically stays there and follow, follows us um, down the website. Okay, so I think that's really good user experience. Um, so for example, on my website, um, I don't have it, okay? So you can disable it if you want to. It's up to you. And then for footer design, um, what I want to do is basically just exclude the site logo. This is the site logo. And this is the back to top button. You can exclude that as well here, okay? And I'm gonna save it to see what that looks like. Save and refresh. Okay, so your blogs should look something like this at the moment, okay? You've got your um, name of logo, tagline, search, the navigation, and you remove the logo here, okay? So what we need to do now is some of you might want to remove this thing here, okay? So I'm going to show you how to do that. So go back to the Themify settings, scroll right down to the very bottom, and you'll see footer text 1 and footer text 2. So this is footer text one, this is footer text two. So to remove footer text two, all you need to do is click on space and then just save it. Okay, that's all you need to do. Um, if you want to add some links to um, link it to another website or something like that, you can check out my FAQ section. I'll probably add that in very soon. Okay, so what we can do now is we can refresh that page and you should see that uh, powered by WordPress disappear. Okay, so everything is looking really good. Now we want to set in our social links. Okay, so click on social links. Let's scroll back up here. And basically all you need to do is to get your um, Twitter profile URL. Okay, so for example, I've logged into Twitter. I'm just gonna copy that URL and you need to paste in your link here. Okay, same for your Facebook. Grab your Facebook fan page URL and then paste it into there. Um, get your Google Plus one, copy that, paste it into there. Uh, YouTube, grab your YouTube, and make sure to subscribe to my channel. I'll be uploading some more videos. So put that into there. And let's say you don't have Pinterest, um, all you need to do is leave it empty, but you might have Instagram, okay? So Instagram doesn't appear here, so you need to click on add link. For your title, just type in Instagram and then um, grab your Instagram URL. Just copy that over, paste it into there and click on insert icon. Okay, click on brand icons and then you've got a lot of brands um, that you can add in depending on what you need. So I'm going to look for I for Insta, Instagram and that's basically it, okay? So you can set in the colors as well, and I recommend setting in um, the same colors so it keeps everything professional, but um, I'm not gonna show you how to do that now because it's not necessary, okay? 
So what we're going to do now is just save it. Now to display the links in the footer section, what you'll need to do is add it into the widgets. Okay, so go to appearance and then click on widgets. And we need to look for um, Themify social links. Okay, so this is your widget and we need to click on it and drag it, drag it up. Okay, and then put it into your footer social widget section. Drop it into there and then I'm going to select open link in a new tab and I do that because it's an external link and um, it's just better for the user. Okay, so do that and save it. If you refresh it, it should show up in the footer section here. Okay, looking awesome. And if you want to add it to the header section up here, all you need to do is to drag the Themify social link widget and put it into the social widget section here. All right, and then just save it. Okay, so let's go back to our website. And basically what we need to do is to set in the menu um, navigation up here. Okay, so as you can see, it's not in order. Uh, we want to put it into order as well. So we need to go back to our dashboard and then we need to go to appearance, click on menus. Okay, we want to give uh, create a new menu and give it a name. So it's going to be top nav for top navigation and then just click on create menu and you can create as many menus as you want. Okay, and then you can add it in for um, specific pages and I'll show you where you can do that later. So select all the pages that you want for the menu. I'm going to select all of it, click on add to menu and you can rearrange it just by holding it and then dragging it like that. Okay, and if you want to create like a drop down menu, for example, the one you see on my page, um, like that, a drop down menu, um, all you need to do is to click on one of the menu links and then drag it and then pull it in like that. So this will be a drop down of home. Okay, when people hover over home, then about will drop down. Okay, that's how you do it. Let's put it back. Okay, so you can also set in this one. So basically, if you add in new pages, then it will be automatically added to this menu. I'm going to leave that empty. For the theme location, I want to select main navigation. And if you want your menu to appear in the footer, you can select um, footer navigation down there as well. Okay, so let's click on refresh and it should um, be in order now. Okay, so that should be your main navigation menu done. The next part of the tutorial will be um, showing you where you can add in a logo and as well as adding in a fav icon here. So fav icons are everything such as these little icons here. Okay, so what we need to do to add the logo is you'll need to go to um, customize. And what I want you to do is automatically take you to Themify options, click on the advanced options tab. Okay, wait for that to load. And then you can click on site logo and tagline, click on site logo. If you don't have a logo image yet, don't worry. You can just put in some text, for example, your logo site title like that. And you can change it to um, all the different fonts here. Okay, I'm going to leave it as default and default. The font is actually called Open Sans. Okay, I'm just going to leave it there. And you can also change the font weight here, which is really cool change it to 600 or something like that and you can change the colors and you've got basic styling options here okay but if you have a logo image all you need to do is click on logo image and um, click on that to upload select files and basically if you've been following along with the tutorial and you've downloaded the images folder then basically um, click on that and we can upload a logo okay so uh, with logos, you want to make sure that if you're creating it yourself, okay, so you want to crop it um, to as close as the actual logo as possible, something like that. So it doesn't have any white space around it at all, okay, um, as compared to this one. So this is a bad example because there's so much white space up here. You want to crop it as close to the logo as possible, okay. And the ideal size that I found is 128 pixels in width times about 64 pixels in height okay but what I recommend is actually going to my description 
and click on the link that will direct you to the $5 logo place and I'll direct you to the Fiverr marketplace. Okay, so this is a place where you can get logo design for just $5, okay? So click on that and you'll be directed here and basically you can check out all these people who provide $5 logos and let's click on one of them. And basically to uh, join, you can just log in with your Facebook or you can enter in your email and fill in some basic details. And after when you've done that, then you can check out uh, which service provider that you want. Um, as you can see, you got uh, 31,000 reviews, 169 orders in queue. And uh, basically you can get logos for here for $5. And I think it's just good value for money. Okay. And you can just tell them the size that you want it to have the logo at, or you can just crop it yourself. Okay. So we can go back here and let's say we upload the logo. Um, this one here, which is the good example, infinite 64 open. And then you can actually insert that into there. And as you can see, it's quite big for here. I want you to type in 64 and then that will be pretty good. Okay. So if you actually save and publish that, um, I might actually open this in a new tab and you can see what that sort of looks like the logo. Okay. So that's pretty good. So um, if you don't have a logo, just click on site title for now and but make sure to delete this measurement here. Otherwise your logo thing will be confined to a certain measurement and um, it will be showing like vertically. Okay. So just click on site title. Uh, I'm just going to save and publish and close that. And I'm going to show you where you can add in your fav icon. Okay. So we need to go back to our dashboard here. I'm going to close that and hover over Themify Ultra, Themify Settings. Okay, so fav icon here, just need to upload it. And for the fav icon size, the recommended size is about um, 32 by 32 pixels. And for this one, um, I don't think it matters about cropping the space up there because it looks pretty good. Okay, so once I upload it in, you'll see what it looks like. Make sure it's a PNG file. Um, that means it's transparent. So open, save it, and then um, visit a website. And you should see the logo up here. And it looks pretty high quality um, and it's pretty much good to go. Okay, so we're pretty much good to go and we can build our home page now. But before we do, uh, we actually need to get the um, images ready to upload. Okay, so as you can see, um, these are really nice hero images that we've got and I'll show you where you can get them for free. And I'm also gonna show you where to crop them to the perfect size so that they're not blurry or um, they're not too big so your website takes too long to load. Okay, so this part's really, really important because you know it's like the signage of your business. If people don't you know, trust your website, like the first impression, they don't trust it, then they're gonna leave. And then basically there's no point, um, you know, having your blog cause they're not going to read your content or anything like that. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to a website called unsplash.com and you can use these images, um, for free and you can edit them and, um, it's awesome. Okay. So if you do want more resources for images, you might not find the perfect images here, but you can go to my website, hoganchua.com, click on blog and somewhere in the blog post you'll see ultimate list of website resources okay so click into that and um, check out my list and i'll show you where i also get some more free images from okay so let's go back to unsplash and let's take for example you like um maybe this image of the fish so click on that okay so you can just click on download and basically you can just save it onto your desktop. What I recommend is creating a new folder and saving the images in that folder. All right. And I've already got the images, so I'm just going to cancel that and I might just close that as well. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to show you where you can edit the images. So click on, um, or go to photo.com and basically you'll need to click on edit. Okay. So this is where I edit my images before uploading to the website. 
to ensure that they're not too big and you can sort of edit the um, the brightness, the sharpness of the image as well as add text to it or whatever you need. Alright, so all we need to do is to open and if you've been following along then click on the images folder and I have an image there for you to crop. So it's called slider 3 to crop. Click on open, close that and basically you'll see this image and you'll see that the size is 3520 times 2272. So that image is really, really, really large and um, you don't want to upload that to your website um, because it's going to take too long to load. So what we need to do is resize it. So click on resize here, close that, um, and click on the lock icon. Okay, so basically when you change the size here, it will resize proportionally for the height as well. So the ideal width that I found was about 1,800 and the height, the ideal height was about 1,000. Okay, so it's not 1,000 automatically, so we need to crop it manually ourselves. So click on crop and type in 1,800 here um, and then type in 1,000 here. Okay, and then select where you want to crop that image. Um, I think that looks pretty good just there. Okay and then I'm going to click on apply. Okay, once you've done that, then you can click on one tap enhance and that basically helps enhance the image a little bit more. It brightens it up, makes it sharper or whatever. Um, you can also click on basic to edit it or you can click on effects and you can add a filter to that image as well. Okay, you can add text as well by clicking here. So I'm just going to save it and I'm going to save it as normal. Okay, so any image about 300 kilobytes or 400 kilobytes that is pretty good okay you don't want it uh, much bigger than that so save to your computer and i'm going to save it as slider 3 i'm going to delete that and i'm just going to save it as cropped okay so just so i know save it there and then close it okay so do that for a few images that you want or you need okay so let's go back to our website and before we turn the builder i like to refresh the page first Okay, so refresh the page and then you can turn on the builder. Okay, and sometimes the builder might not um, turn on. And what I recommend you do is to check out my FAQ again. Generally, um, the most common fix is that uh, is to use Google Chrome. So I've had a lot of people use Safari or some other browser. It didn't work properly. But once I switched to Chrome, then it worked. Okay. Um, and also make sure that you're on the latest version of WordPress and also the version of PHP is 5.6 plus, okay? And also um, you might want to try deactivate the plugins which are not mentioned in the tutorial, okay? So if you have any issues, just uh, leave a comment, all right? So let's go back here and let's click on the row options because we want to set in a slider. And what I want you to do is to go to styling tab Okay, so you can upload an image um, if you want to. And to upload an image, make sure to click on Browse Library to upload your image, like here. Okay, so don't click on Upload, otherwise it would automatically um, sort of crop your image for you, and that will make your image really, really blurry. So make sure to click on Browse Library if you want to upload an image. And for the background mode, I recommend Full Cover. And background position, I recommend Center Center. Okay, so um, I'm going to be adding in a slider and I'm going to insert gallery. I'm going to upload the file, select files. I'm going to select slider 1, slider 2, and slider 3, which is cropped. Okay, click on open and I'm just going to wait for that to upload. Okay, once that is um, done uploading, then you can just add to gallery and then update gallery and then you've got your slider images. And for the image size, you want to set in original. For the background slider mode, you want to select full cover. And uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to click on save to see what that sort of looks like. Okay, save it. Okay, you'll see that um, the whole image doesn't really appear yet. Okay, uh, what we need to do actually is to add in some padding, which is also known as some space inside there. So we need to go back to options, go to styling, and then scroll down to padding, okay? 
So for the padding, I want you to uh, deselect that, type in 15, change that to percentage, okay, and type in 15 for the bottom and change that to percentage. Okay, so you see that it's added space um, for that image and once we've added some text in there, um, then it will be even taller. Okay, so you can see more of that image. So just keep it as 15% for now. And then what I want you to do is I want you to go to scroll back up a little bit and go to row overlay. And here I want you to set in black. Okay. And I want to set the opacity down to about 10% like that. So what this basically does, it makes it um, sort of a little bit darker, your image. And why I do that is because I want to add in some white text in later on. So that makes the white text sort of pop out a lot more. But if your image is like dark already, then you might not need to add in the overlay color. Okay. So I'm going to set in the overlay hover. And basically what that means is if I hover over that image, then it will turn into whatever color that um, I set in here. Okay. So I might change that to like maybe 0 0.5 like that. And then uh, what I'm going to do is just click on save save it and then close it okay so before I add in text um, as you can see there's space up here space on the side I want to make sure that um, it covers the whole screen so to do that uh, what I want you to do is click on edit page scroll down to themify custom panel oops themify custom panel and for the content width you want to select full width okay so this themify custom panel is basically where you can edit um, the specific page. You can edit the page appearance for that specific page. And you can also select a custom menu that you've created for that specific page. Okay. So we're going to click on update and I'm going to view the page and hopefully that covers the whole screen now. Okay. That's awesome. Uh, I'm going to turn on the builder and let's add in some text. So as you can see, we've got all different types of modules. Um, I'm going to drop in the text module right into there. And then I'm going to type in the headline. So discover. And I'm going to set this to heading one tag. You want to click on toggle toolbar, select heading one, give that a little preview. Okay. So the text is there and you can go to styling and you can click on heading tab here. And basically you can edit the fonts uh, family font color font size here but I'm not gonna do that because I'm gonna show you how to do it um, in the customizer section um, because I want to edit the heading one fonts universally so whenever I set the heading one font then it will be um, default okay so it saves a lot of time and it keeps things really consistent so after that um, what I want you to do is I want you to go to animation and I'm gonna set in some animation so click on this and set in fade in and select one second delay okay just click on save once you've done that then I'm gonna add in the sub headline so I'm gonna duplicate that text module below double click it and then I'm gonna type in um, my sub headline okay so it's gonna be create your own blog today like that and then um, I want to go to styling for the font size I'm going to change it to 24 like that um, I might give that a little preview okay that's what I want for the animation instead of one second I want to set it to 1.5 second so it will appear after the um, headline click on save okay so you notice that these two colors aren't set in already uh, what I like to do is I like to go to the row options, go to styling, and then go to font. Okay, and for the font color, I want to change it to white. So basically, what that does, it edits all the um, fonts within this entire row, and um, it's just a little bit more convenient. Okay, and then you can click on center, that will center everything within the row. So after when you've done that, you can click on save. And the next thing that we're going to do now is to drop in an icon. Okay. And we're going to drop in the arrow icon. So 
I'm going to insert icon and we're going to set in directional okay angle double down give that a little preview okay so that what's uh, that's what it currently looks like I want to change that to large and I want to change the background style to none and then I want to go to styling um, actually before that I want to go to link and I want you to type in hash row 2 okay make sure it, it is exactly like this um, it is case sensitive and make sure there's no spaces as well okay after that go to styling and click on icon and make sure to set the color to white here okay so that ensures that icon is white for the animation I'm gonna set in the same animation fade in because I want it to keep it consistent and then I want to set the delay to two seconds okay set that to two seconds and that is pretty much done save it and what I want to do now is basically set in the heading one font so I'm going to close the builder so I'm going to go to customize and then what I want you to do is that will automatically pop out your theme of our options click on heading and click on heading one font and this is our heading one font as you remember setting it in but if you do forget then you can right click inspect and you should see the heading one tag there all right so what I'm gonna do is set the font to about 80 pixels and you can change it to whatever font you want but I'm gonna leave it as default which is open sans uh, which looks nice and simple and good then I'm gonna change the font weight to about 600 okay or maybe bold if that looks better um, I think 600 looks pretty good and then I'm gonna save and publish close it and I think that looks pretty good um, I might want to move this text up a little bit okay to do that we can turn on the builder and we need to set in some minus um, margins so turn that on uh, double click this text module go to styling and deselect um, this and put in minus two percent for margin okay so we can click on save and as you can see it moved up a little bit okay so basically that is pretty much done um, we do need to go to the second row here and we need to set in the row anchor okay so as you can see uh, if we click on that it'll scroll down to this section here okay and the reason why it does that is because we put the link in here which is the hash row 2 and we've set in the row location okay so we're going to set in the row location now so click on the row options here and you'll see row anchor okay so instead of the hash um, leave that out just type in row 2 and then click on save okay if we save it and close it and hopefully I'm gonna refresh it and hopefully if we click it then it'll scroll down to that section we've set in so if you click on the arrow it will scroll you down to the row location 2 that you just set in for that row okay so now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna be showing you how to add in your blog post okay um, adding links images and video to that blog post as well and basically let's get started okay so to add in a blog post uh, we can go back to our dashboard first and then basically um, we can click on post here okay so we're going to delete the hello world post which is the sample so trash that first and then go to trash and delete that permanently and then I might just close those things here click on add new okay so this will be the title of your blog post so for example um, inspire the world and this will be where you'll be adding in your text so you'll be typing in the blog post adding in the images and things like that here so you got a really basic uh, word editor thing here okay I'm just gonna paste in some random um, text and show you so copy that over and what I normally do when I'm pasting in something from another um, source is to right click and paste and match style okay um, if you're on Windows I think you will paste and plain text but if you don't have those options just click on this icon here 
and basically that will paste everything as plain text. So Control V or Command V, um, that pastes some uh, the stuff in there. Okay, so to add a link, all you need to do is highlight the text that you want to be linked. Okay, and then click on Insert Link, and click on Link Options. So for example, you might want to link it to the website here. Copy the link URL, paste it into there. And uh, because it's an external link, I like to open link in a new tab. Okay, so if you have existing content, you can just search for it here and you can select it and instantly add that link. All right, so I'm gonna click on add link. And there you go, there's your link. To add in an image, so for example, I might hit enter there. Um, you need, need to click on add media. Upload files, select files and I'm going to upload the blog image uh, number one. Okay, click on open and the size of that image is set to 1165 width in pixels times 775. Okay, so normally I would keep the width at somewhere around 1000 or so um, to ensure that it's kind of good quality. But for the blog post, you don't really have to have a standard um, image size, okay? but try to keep it consistent, that way it'll look nice and professional on your website. So for the size, I'm just gonna select uh, full size here and insert that into post and the image will appear. Okay, so that's looking good. And basically to add in a video, what you'll need to do is to go to YouTube, find a video that uh, you like or is your video, copy the URL, go back to your post and let's say you want to put your video here. Just hit on enter and just paste in the URL and it will appear um, in about one second like that. Okay, really, really simple. And after when you've done that, then you want to set in a category for your post just to sort out um, all your blog posts and things like that. Make it easier for people to search. So add a new category. Um, this category might be travel. Click on add new. And then you've got tags here. So tags is for search engines as well as people might use the search function and it will take the tags and look for the blog post. Okay, so for this one might be hiking and then comma to separate it. Travel the world. Click on add. And then what I want you to do is set in a featured image. So the featured image is basically the image that will show up on your um, home page like that okay so let's go to the featured image upload files select files and click on blog one feature click on open and the size for the blog uh, featured image is 1165 times 665 okay so if you're beginning then I recommend uh, using this size okay so it's the optimal size that I found and um, set featured image and that'll be good to go, I'm pretty sure. Just click on publish. And afterwards, when you've published that, then we can view that post. Okay, so we're gonna view the post, right click, open link in a new tab, and there's your blog post. So this is your featured image that you set in, okay, your first image. Scroll down, your title. This is your meta information. This is your author, uh, category, tags, number of comments, the link that you've added in, okay? The image that you've added in, and also the video that you've added in, and the plugin, which is the social sharing by Danny, down here, nice and simple. And also the comment section, people are able to submit a comment, all right? So let's go back to that post, and if we scroll down, you'll see Themify custom panel. You can actually change the post layout to any of these post layouts, which is really cool. For example, split. If we select that and update it, and if we actually uh, refresh this page, okay, you'll see that the blog post has changed layout. So that's a really cool feature um, of this theme. And you can also play around with the settings here. But if you go back to the Themify settings, you can actually set the default post layout. Okay, so I'm gonna show you again. And then go to default layouts, scroll down to default single post layout, and then you can set the default single post layouts for 
all the new blog posts that you're going to add in. All right. So one of the most common things is that people want to remove the circle date thing. And to do that, you can click on display post date as inline text instead of the circle style and basically select that and then you can click on save. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to add in a few more blog posts. So I might pause the video and do that. And then I'm going to come back and show you how to add it onto your homepage. All right. So you just click on post again and click on add new. Okay. So I'm going to add them in um, now. So I've basically added in all the post and what I'm going to do is go back to my uh, homepage and add in the post module. Okay. So we're going to turn on the builder, scroll down here. Okay. And we're going to drag in the post module um, into this section. Okay. So actually before I actually do that, um, we actually need to set in the row. Okay. The columns actually, sorry. And I want to set into this one here. Okay. So you've got the um, sidebar here and the main section here where we're going to drop in the post. So drop in the post module there. Okay. So you've got different post layout so you can preview that to see what that sort of looks like at the moment. You've got different post layouts that you can set. I'm going to set in the default one and you can set in specific categories only or you can exclude categories and you can limit the number of posts to show. I might uh, put in the limit to be six. Okay. And the most important part is the display. Okay. So at the moment it's displaying the all um, of the content in the blog post. You want it to display just a excerpt of it. So that would basically mean um, just a small summary of the blog post and people can click into that blog post to read more about it. Okay. So you've got some basic settings that you can set in here. Um, that's not really necessary. Okay. Um, the only thing that I want to do is I want to add styling, um, align everything into the middle. Okay. So align center like that. And I think that looks pretty good. Okay. Then all you need to do is just click on save. And now we're going to add in the sidebar section. So you can drop in widgetized uh, module into there, select sidebar and we can click on save. And this is the basic default sidebar. I'm going to show you how to um, add in everything that you need in just a moment. Um, before we do that, I'm going to add a little bit of spacing to the top here um, because it's too close to the slider. So go to options for the row number two, styling and deselect that. For the padding for the top, set it to 5%. For the bottom, set that to 5% as well. And then click on save. Okay, so besides adding in the post module, um, you can actually add in the slider module as well to display blog post. So you might have a few feature blog posts that you want to display, then you can set in the specific categories or whatever you want. So basically if we preview that, it will actually show a slider version of it. So I'm going to set the display to excerpt, which is a small um, summary. There you'll see your slider. Okay, so people can select that post and um, click it and then read more about it once they click into it. Okay. So um, besides adding in um, post as slider, you can also add in images as well. Make sure to click on browse library, of course, and you can do videos as well. So you can paste in the video, um, a YouTube URL, and also you can do a text slider. So it's really good for testimonials or quotes and things like that. Okay. So basically if we close that, then you can also add in a video as well. So these are the most common modules that people use the video. For example, if you drop a video in there and all you need to do is to, let's say, um, we find a video here, copy that URL. I'm going to pause that video and all you need to do is paste that URL in here, preview that. And then you have a video here. Okay. So you can save it and you can move that video anywhere on your page. So we're going to close that. Okay. And one more really common uh, module is the gallery module. So you can drop in a gallery. Um, you can drop it into this column um, here, or you can drop it into a new row like that. And you can insert the gallery, click that. And basically 
I'm just going to select the images that I have uploaded before, like that. I might select those six images and then add to gallery. Okay, update gallery. And if you preview that, it will show um, your gallery like that. Since there's only six images, then you can select uh, three columns. So it'll be two images per column. Okay, and then you can click on save. Save that, okay, and then close it. And basically people can click on that and it'll open up in a light box. Okay, so you can showcase your work or anything that you want really, all right? So we're gonna turn on the builder and delete that module. Delete that like that. Okay, what so that I want to show you is that um, what you can do is let's say uh, we make a mistake. Okay, we can click on this thing and we can drag that thing across like that. Okay, and you made a mistake. All right, for example, that's a mistake. Then what you can do is actually click on undo and that will undo the changes that you made. Okay, and what you can do as well is you can actually save the revision. Okay, so you can Click on the arrow here, save as revision, and this is useful if you have made a big mistake, and then you can basically load the revision. So home page, and then you could do um, the date, so 1st December, and then you can put in a time or something like that, and save that revision. Okay, so let's say you make a big mistake, then you can load the revision, and then your layout will be back to normal again. Okay, so what you can um, also do, you can also um, save as layout, so save the layout like that. Put in a title, okay, and save it. And basically with the layout, um, what it's useful for is, for example, if you want to create a similar page to the home page on the about page or any other page you want, is you can actually uh, load the layout. So click on load layout. And these are some pre-designed layouts that you can use and parallax ones, which are really cool as well and um, this is the one that you saved in. Okay, so you can click on that and then that will load the whole entire layout for you. Then you save a lot of time from rebuilding it again, okay? So um, yeah, pretty much right now, I'm gonna show you how to configure the sidebar and the first thing that we're gonna do is to um, set up the MailChimp account, okay? Let's save that and close that. What I want you to do is open a new tab and type in uh, MailChimp.com and this will take you to MailChimp.com and basically you'll need to sign up for free. Uh, click on sign up free. All you need to do is to fill in your email, username and password that you want. Okay, and then click on get started and after that you'll receive a um, email to confirm that you have signed up for the account and then it'll take you to another page where you have to fill in your basic details. Basically after that you can log into your account. Okay, so I am a uh, member already. So I'm just gonna log into my account. Okay, log in. And basically once you've logged in, you should see um, a pretty similar um, dashboard. And the first thing that you need to do is probably create a list. So click on list. And what you'll need to do is click on create list create list. Okay, for your list name, just put in your website address or something like that, as long as you know what the list is for. Okay, so this might be blog tutorial December. Okay, and put in your email address. Okay, if you put in your Gmail address, this will come up. If you don't have a, um, for example, a domain email address yet, just leave it as your Gmail address. And I'll probably create a video pretty soon. And I'll put that link in the description below. Okay, and then you can watch that to create your own domain email. Okay, so I might put in my one, uh, which I've actually made beforehand. Uh, from the name, just type in your name here. And write in a short reminder of how people signed up. So, YouTube tutorials Okay, and then um, you'll need to put in your address. I think you should have already done that. Then um, click on save. Okay, so you've created the new list and what you need to do now 
is we'll need to get the API code to connect um, it to our MailChimp plugin. So click on here and click on profile and then click on extras, API keys. And what you'll need to do is you probably won't have an API key here yet. So you need to click on create a new key. So create a new key and this will come up. Then copy over the API to your clipboard. Go back to your website, okay? And then go to your dashboard. And then click on MailChimp, MailChimp here. Paste in your API key, just like that. And save changes and it should connect. And if it's connected, then it should show a green thing like that, okay? Once you've done that, then click on Forms, okay? And what you'll need to do, let's click on that again. Okay, what you'll need to do is enter in a new form name. So this one might be Blog Site Demo. And then select the list that you just created, okay? So normally you should just have one list. So select that and add a new form. Okay, once that is done, then they'll have your default form ready and you can preview that form just by clicking on that. And by default, that's what your form looks like. Um, personally, I'm gonna delete, uh, sorry, delete email address because email address is already in here and change the name to subscribe. Okay, so let's go back to the uh, form fields here and I'm gonna delete that label like that. I'm gonna change the name to subscribe here Okay, and you can also add in other um, fields as well. You can check out the FAQ if you have any more um, queries. Okay, so let's save the changes. And once that is done, maybe give that a little preview again to see what that looks like. Okay, that's what we want it to look like. Then what you'll need to do is um, if you wanna paste, um, add in the subscribe box to anywhere on your website, just copy over the short code to your clipboard and then you can paste it inside a post, a page, or inside the text module, and um, the subscribe box will actually show up, okay? But we're gonna add it into the sidebar, so what you need to do is go to Appearance and click on Widgets, and this is your sidebar here at the moment, okay? Uh, that's the sidebar section. So we're gonna delete everything in here for now, and we're gonna add it in ourselves. So I'm gonna quickly delete that, Okay, so once you've deleted all of that, and then look on the left, you'll see MailChimp sign up form. Drag it and put it in there. And all you need to do is click on save. Okay, and once you've saved that, then basically you can go and visit your website. I might close that for now. And then scroll down, and then you'll see your email subscribe box. Okay, so people can enter in the email and subscribe and then they'll subscribe to your list and then you can um, promote to them your offers or anything like that through email campaigns, okay? So let's go back to widgets and the next thing that we're gonna be adding in is the profile picture, okay? So that's really, really easy as well. So what we need to do is go back to our dashboard section and click on media. So we're gonna upload the profile picture of yourself first, okay? So click on add new. Okay, so click on select files and then I'm gonna to go to my desktop and the images folder and upload profile picture, okay? So if you're following along, then just upload my one for now. Click on open. And the size of the image is 250 pixels by 250, okay? So to keep it nice and small, otherwise it's gonna to take too long to load. So what you want is copying um, this URL here to your clipboard and then you can close that for now. And then you'll need to go back to the widget area. And we need to drag in a text module, a text widget, sorry, and put it below um, the MailChimp thing, okay? So now what we're gonna do is add in some really basic HTML so we can display our profile picture. So follow me exactly and you should be good. So the less than sign, IMG, space, SRC equals, um, quotation marks, and then uh, Command V or Control V, which basically pastes in that uh, profile URL. Quotation marks to close it, okay? And then type in Alt, A-L-T, equals, 
quotation marks and then type in your name or the name of your image. Okay, so basically what that does is it tells Google what that image is about. Okay, so make sure to put the quotation marks um, there as well. Um, because Google can't read images, so you have to tell Google what that is about. And um, basically when Google reads your page, then they'll, they'll be like, oh, okay, that's an image of Hogan Chua. Okay, so once you've done that, then click on height. I mean, type out height equals quotation marks 75% quotation marks again type out width equals quotation marks 75% and quotation marks again and then close it with the greater than sign okay so really easy all you need to do is replace your URL here um, replace the name of that image which will be probably your name and that's about it Okay, and if you have any issues, make sure that is all correct. Save it. Go back and refresh the page and the image should appear. Okay, all good. So the next part we're going to be doing is adding in the, um, basically the recent post or the most popular post. So let's go back to widget area. This part is even easier. All you need to do is drag in the theme of five featured posts. Scroll back up and put it below there. Okay. So you might change that to most oops, popular post, And you can select specific categories, um, show five post. I'm going to show the post date and display post thumbnail as well. So for the thumbnail size, I want to select 120 times 68. All right, so that's the ideal size that I found. And then you can click on save. Give that a little refresh and then you should be good to go, okay? So if you want your site to load quicker, then what I suggest you do is to disable the post thumbnails because then the website wouldn't need to load extra images and that will speed things up, okay? Now the next part that we're gonna be adding in is the um, tweets, okay? So you can add in um, the Twitter feed. So what we need to do is actually we need to connect the Twitter feed to our website. So let's go to Themeify Ultra, Themeify Settings. Scroll down to Twitter Settings. And what you'll need to do here is we need to get the consumer key and consumer secret. So let's um, right click here, open the documentation um, in a new tab. And then what I want you to do is click on create an application on Twitter. Um, before you do that, uh, you might need to log in first to your Twitter account. Okay, so try to log in first and then click on create application. Okay, because once when you have logged in, then it will direct you straight here to fill in the application details. So I'm just going to put in the application name. So maybe um, blog tutorial December 1 description. Twitter feed for tutorial, uh, whatever you want really, okay? For your website, um, what you'll need to do is copy over the website URL. So make sure to copy that, like that. Exclude everything after that forward uh, slash, all right? So it should be something like that, okay? And then that's all you need to do. Just click on yes and create Twitter application. Okay, so once that is done, then you need to click on keys and access tokens. And we need to basically just copy that key and paste it into here. Paste the consumer API. Oops, back into here. All right, make sure to delete that space, otherwise it won't work. And then click on save. Okay, once that is done, then what you need to do is go to appearance widgets and then you'll need to scroll down and look for themify twitter scroll back up and put it below the featured post and for the twitter id okay your twitter id is normally this one here hogan chua for example so you can copy over that and we can just um, paste it into here that show maybe three tweets display the follow me button 
include retweets and exclude replies, click on save. All right, so once that is done, then we can give that a little preview and hopefully it will show up on our page. Oops, scrolling down. Okay, you've got your Twitter feed there, looking great. Okay, now the next part is adding in the Facebook like box. Okay, this one's a little bit easier. Um, so what we need to do, okay, so we need to look for easy Facebook like box and drag it and put it underneath. What we need is your Facebook URL. So copy that to your clipboard and paste it into here. And for the width, um, what I recommend is setting in, I think, uh, 270. The height, set it to 400, okay? And set it to be responsive. Show post as well, and click on save. Now you can also copy this short code here and paste it into anywhere on your website, in your post, pages, or the text module, anything you want, okay? And it will show up. So once you've saved that, then you can actually go to the page refresh it and hopefully your Twitter feed, um, I mean your Facebook feed will show up below that. Okay, that's looking awesome and people can like it straight away. Now the next part will be our Instagram feed. Okay, so that's really simple as well. Let's go back to widget area and let's click on Instagram feed here. Okay, and same thing, we need to log in and get the access token. So what we're going to do is click on uh, the link here and we basically need to log in. Okay, so enter in your username, password, and then log in. Okay, once you've done that, then we need to get the access token, copy all of that, paste it into there and get the user ID, copy that, and basically just paste it into there as well. Okay, then we're going to save the changes and we're going to customize the feed. So click on customize. And here, um, all the options are pretty much optional, um, but I'm going to show you how I customize my one. Okay. So for the number of images, I'm going to select eight images. And for the number of columns, because I want it into the sidebar, I'm only going to select two columns. So if you want to display it on your homepage, you might have like four columns or six columns or something like that. Uh, it's up to you and then scroll down for the header I'm going to disable it scroll down for load more button I'm going to disable that as well but for the follow button I'm going to leave it and I'm going to change the background color to black as well as changing the text color to white okay and then all you need to do is click on save changes click on display feed and copy over the short code and you can use these other short codes to display uh, your feed sort of in a different um, display, basically. Okay. Uh, what we need to do once you've got the uh, short code is go back to appearance and go to your widget area. And then all you need to do is drag in a text uh, widget, put it there, paste in the short code, save it, and let's give our page a little refresh. And there you go, awesome. We've got our Instagram feed and that's looking great. Okay, so right now I'm gonna show you how to add in Google AdSense. Um, it might not be important to you now, but I think later on um, you wanna monetize your blog to make some you know, passive income so you can get money for you know doing what you love, all right? So basically the Google AdSense is this ad thing that you see here, okay? and it's really easy to add it in okay so i'm going to quickly show you so basically um we're going to type in google adsense in google okay and just click on the first result here and just click on that and if you don't have an account yet then you'll need to sign up uh now okay so click on sign up now and basically um it says that i'm currently signed into my email okay so you can actually use it to sign up automatically so you can just click on yes or you can use another account and then you probably have to fill in some more um, details and things like that okay um, so you might need to fill in your website details um, information about you and maybe your payment methods and things like that all right so I'm just gonna log into the current account and then basically this is the dashboard so I'm gonna go and click on my ads here okay 
and basically all you need to do is click on add a new ad unit okay and then name it so maybe um, blog tutorial test um, December 2 okay and basically select this one here which is automatically selected you can also change the text ad style but I'm gonna leave it as default and all you need to do is save and get the code okay it should say that the code has been successfully created all you need to do is to copy over this code copy that to your clipboard okay and you need to go back to your website here and we need to go to hover over here and you can click on widgets here which is a shortcut and basically all you need to do is to drag in a text uh, module okay and put it below the Instagram feed okay paste the code in and click on save okay and we can go and visit our website open link in the new tab and hopefully it will show up sometimes it might not automatically show up yet it might take a few hours um, I'm not sure it might be the part of the algorithm um, or it might be that you, your website doesn't have unique content yet and I think part of the algorithm uses your content to determine what sort of ads to show um, on your blog okay so as you can see it's not showed up yet and also you got to make sure that your Google ad block thing is also uh, enabled for your website otherwise it's going to block that ad and um, it won't show up okay so to make sure that the ad is probably there then you can just uh, inspect it like that and if you scroll up a little bit you should see this thing here which says Google Ads uh, .g and things like that and it should highlight blue on the left okay that means the Google Ads is active it just hasn't showed up yet okay so um, don't worry about too much now because you're not getting any traffic to your blog anyway so uh, you can worry about it once you start getting traffic okay I just wanted to show you guys and also um, also do want to show you that this can be applied for all sorts of banner ads that you might get with other affiliate programs okay such as Amazon okay so for example for the banner ads for Amazon you're able to select the different categories for example if you want to display a camera ad then all you need to do is they'll give you a basically a HTML code that you can just copy to your clipboard and essentially just paste it into the text widget area as well the same as that and save Okay, so a lot of affiliate programs will give you banner HTML to add in like that. And if we refresh that page, hopefully this one will actually show up. Okay, so let's scroll back down. And as you can see, the ad shows up. Okay, so I'm also going to show you another method um, because sometimes affiliate programs might just give you a affiliate link rather than HTML that you can actually just paste into your website. So I'm going to show you how to add that in. Okay, so what we need to do first is we need to go to the widget area. Okay, and go back to your dashboard basically. And you need to click on media. Okay, so basically you'll need to upload the image or the banner that you want to display on your sidebar. Okay, so I'm going to click on add new, select files. And in the images folder that uh, if you've been following along, I have an Amazon ad image. Okay, so this is basically just an example. It can be any banner ad. So click on open. And there you have your Amazon ad. Okay, and then you've got your URL here. Okay, to that image. So double click on that to select all and copy that to your clipboard. And basically what you need to do is you need to go to your widgets area again. And then what you want to do is drag in a text module below that and maybe just paste that into there, okay, the URL of that image first. Okay, and then uh, normally you'll get a affiliate link. Okay, so I'm going to use product links from Amazon as an example. So I'm going to search for a book. Go. Um, and then what I'm going to do is click on that, okay and they will give you a link okay so this is the affiliate link so I'm gonna actually shorten it uh, with this and copy that to my clipboard like that and then this is your affiliate link so this can be any affiliate link that your affiliate uh, program gives you okay this is just an example 
So what you need to do now is type in some basic HTML. So this is fairly similar to the one that we added for our profile image. Okay, so type in the less than sign, a target equals quotation marks, blank quotation marks, space href equals quotation mark. And then what I want you to paste in is your affiliate URL. Okay, and then close the quotation mark and then the greater than sign, less than sign, IMG, and then SRC equals quotation mark. And now what I want you to paste in is copy your image or banner URL and paste it into there. Okay, so I'm going to delete that. And then quotation marks again to close it. And then ALT alt equals quotation marks name of ad. Okay, so this is for search engine purposes. And then type in height equals 100% quotation marks and then width equals 100% quotation marks. Okay. And then um, greater than sign, less than sign, forward slash a greater than sign. Okay. So basically, all you need to do is change this to your affiliate URL and then change this to your image URL and then change this to the name of the ad. Okay, so it might be affiliates, uh, Amazon affiliate ad. And once you've done that, you can save it. And if we go back to our blog, we can view that. So hopefully that will appear underneath. So scroll down. And this is our own banner ad. Okay, that links to the affiliates uh, product. So if we click on that, it'll open up in a new tab. And if people buy from that uh, link, then you might get a small commission from your affiliate program, all right? So that is all good, all done. Now what we need to do is go back to the website and I'm gonna show you how to build the about page and make it really, really cool. So you can basically wow your visitors, okay? And you can apply the same principles to any page on your website. Okay, so the first thing that I want you to do is to turn on the builder and then basically um, what you need to do is click on the row options here and then you want to go to styling okay and for the background image you want to click on browse library make sure to, to not click on upload okay and then I want to upload files select files and I want to upload the three images that I have pre-cropped already okay about one about two and three open Okay, once that is done uploading, then I'm gonna select the about one image, which is cropped to 1,800 times 1,000 in height. Insert file URL. Uh, for the background mode, I'm gonna select parallax scrolling. Um, that's a really cool effect. And background position, I'm gonna select the focus to be center center. Okay, once that is done, then scroll down to padding. Okay, and deselect this and put in about, I think 20% padding on the top, so it adds some space, the so, uh, image will actually show up, and 20% for the bottom, just like that. And you can click on save, and let's save that first, and close it. And now what we wanna do is make sure that it goes all the way to the left, and all the way to the right, all the way to the top. So you need to click on edit page, um, scroll down, and for the content width, you wanna select full width, okay? And then we can update. Let's go to view page and that should be good to go. Okay, so I'm going to open up my demo about page. Okay, go back here. Let's turn on the builder first. And let's drop a text module in the middle, just like that. And I'm going to grab the text here. Okay, so this can be a mission statement or a quote or something like that. Go back here. And then I'm going to paste and match style. Okay, so it doesn't add any styling to it. Then I'm going to set it to heading three tag. Okay, and then let's give that a little preview to see what that sort of looks like. And that looks pretty good. Okay, and then I'm going to go to styling. And I might change the font color to white so it stands out a little bit more. Hopefully. Okay, it looks good. And then I might align it to the center so it's in the center. And I might set animation as well. So set it to maybe fade in to one second delay. Okay, awesome. And that is done for the first row. 
Okay, so click on save. Now I'm going to show you how to build the second row, which includes your image and a little bit about you. So I'm going to select this one, the four columns, okay? And then I'm going to rearrange it, okay, the size of each column. So pull it into about 10% on the left, okay, that's good enough. And then pull this one into about 20%, that's good enough. And then pull this one out to the right to about 10% as well. Something like that, okay, good enough. And then all you need to do is drag in an image module and then browse library to upload your profile image, which you should have uploaded already. Okay, here we go. And the size, again, it's 250 by 250. Insert, give that a little preview, and that is good to go. Okay, click on save. The next part will be dropping in a text module into there. And I'm just gonna grab the text that I've done already. So write a little bit about yourself. Um, copy that over paste and match style again okay I'm gonna click on enter one time and then set this one to heading 3 tag okay give that a little preview okay looking great and then we can save it and now what I want to do is add a little bit of padding to the top and bottom of that row because it's too close to the um, image here okay so for options styling Okay, deselect that, 5% to the top and 5% to the bottom. Okay, so that's pretty standard. Or I might put maybe 7.5. Oops, 7.5, 7.5. Okay, it depends on what you like. Okay, let's click on save. I think that looks pretty good. And now what I want to show you is actually the column alignment feature. Okay, so basically, as you can see, the image is up here, but you sort of want the image to be in between that text. And if you hover over here, you can select the column alignment, this one, the middle option, and take notice of that image and text. So you'll see that the image will align to the middle of that text, and that keeps everything nice and uh, aligned and professional. Okay, so now the third row, really simple options, again, row options. And then we're going to set in the background image, browse library, about number two, select file. This one will be parallax scrolling as well. Background, center, center. Scroll down to padding. This one will be 17.5%. Spacing to the top. And same for the bottom. That is done. Click on save. Okay, really, really quick. Now the next one will be a text. Okay, so this will be a quote. And I'm going to copy it from this website again, okay? So just grab that over. And again, I'm going to paste and match style or paste as plain text. Hit enter one time, okay? And this will be heading three. Give that a little preview, okay? You probably want to centerize it, okay? Center it like that. Done. Okay, we're going to add a little bit of padding to the top and bottom again. So go to row options, styling and deselect that. For the padding, I want to set to about 11% or so, and 9% to the bottom. Okay, I think that looks good. And then we can click on the save. Okay, so obviously you can add some animation to all the modules, but I'm not gonna do that for now. So next row will be another last image. So styling, browse library, and this one will be about number three. Okay, insert file, um, set it to parallax scrolling again. And this one, I'm gonna set the focus to center bottom. Okay, so I'm gonna save it. Oops, I forgot to add some padding. Okay, go back to styling. And then 17.5% to the top and 17.5 to the bottom. Save it. And close it, close it, save it. And let's close this. Okay, let's have a look at our website. Okay, really, really quick, five minutes, and you've built a really, really nice about page. Okay, so the really hard part is probably just finding the right images and um, sort of matching it up so it looks great. Okay, now the next part will be building the blog page. So click on the blog page, turn on the builder, and then what I want you to do is set in the columns. Okay, so I'm going to set it to this one here, 
uh, 1 to 2 to 1 ratio so it has a middle like that and then I want to set in the size to pull that out to about 20% or so like that and pull that out a little bit as well to about 20% on the right hand side okay and then what I want you to do is drop in a post module so look for post where is it there it is and then what I'm going to do is click on preview and as you can see there, there you go your post is there but I'm going to set it to um, excerpt so it shows just a summary of it so people click in and then they can read more okay um, and then go to styling and then set the text or line into the center like that okay and obviously you can set in um, different post layouts it's really up to you how you'll display it but I think this is a nice and simple way to do it but um, I'm gonna limit the number of posts to five for this page I have I think total of six blog posts on um, my blog okay and if you limit it to five then it only show five so if you give that a preview then one of them will disappear the last one has disappeared and you can also set in for the hide page navigation to know and then what that basically does is on the bottom it will show the pages okay and people can click page one or page two so that's pretty cool click on save and if you want to add a sidebar or anything like that then you can drag in the widget ties module sidebar and then um, save it in there and then you got your sidebar there okay really really awesome let's click on X save it and close it okay good so let's go and build the contact page now all right so this will be really quick as well hopefully let's go to uh, turn on the builder okay so let's click on the row options and for this one we're gonna set in the full width row container okay and after that we can click on save okay so that goes all the way across and now we want to drop in a map module so drag that in and basically you can set in your address so for example I might type in Melbourne in Australia okay so you can put it as exact as you want and then for the zoom I'm gonna set that to 6 and for the height I'm gonna set that to 350 pixels okay and you can preview that and sometimes it might not actually show up yet as you can see because we actually need to set in the API code okay so just leave that as is for now and we're going to actually save it now okay if we save it and then close it then the map won't show up okay so we're going to go back to our dashboard and connect the API so go back to your dashboard let's go to themify ultra themify settings and then we're going to go to Google map okay click on that and I'm going to right click it open link in a new tab to generate an API key so make sure to log into your Google account first so you'll be automatically directed here okay and then click on get a key okay so all you need to do is create a new project like that and maybe type in a name for it so December 2 log tutorial or something like that and create an enable API so that's going to take a minute or so depending um, on how fast they process it okay okay um, there is your API so click on this to copy it to clipboard let's go back to our WordPress and all you need to do is paste in the API code hopefully that is correct and uh, let's click on save and then let's go back to visit our site okay click on contact page and hopefully your map will actually show up okay so that's looking pretty good but now we want to make sure that it goes all the way across to the left and to the right and to the top so let's click on edit page and let's scroll down scroll down sorry and let's click on full width okay so you have to select full width for each page that you want to um, create a hero image okay so click on update and let's view the page and hopefully that is all good okay looking good let's turn on the builder and let's add in some text and our contact form okay so for the second row we want to set the column to one to one ratio and I actually want to adjust the size to about 67 or maybe 
60% or something like that. Um, you can adjust it later, something like that, okay? And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop in a text uh, module up here. Go back to this page and click on contact. So I'm just going to copy it straight from the demo. Okay, so you can type it in if you want to, copy that. And then paste and match style. Okay, and I'm going to bold these. Just like that. And click on enter one time. And you can click on the horizontal line to create a divider line. So I click on that and let's click on save hopefully it shows up good okay you can also use the divider line module here to create that line okay now what i want you to do is drop in a image uh, module below that okay so i'm going to fill up the space a little bit because otherwise it's too empty um let's click on browse library upload files select files and click on contact page um, i have an image there click on open and then insert file url and basically you can save it and that's all good okay so we're gonna go back to our dashboard so I'm gonna open that in a new tab actually close that for now now we need to get our contact form short code and okay? so click on contact here and here is your short code but I want you to click on edit first okay I want to click on the mail tab and make sure that email is set here correctly okay and also you might need to check your spam folder um, as contact messages might be sent there. So make sure to whitelist those messages. Okay, click on form here and you can change the labels and things like that. You can also check out the documentation because you can create all sorts of things with the contact form. Okay, but in general, let's copy the short code from here. Okay, and then we can drop in a text module and let's paste in the short code, click on save. And that is done. Okay, so you can adjust the size here to make sure that it matches up like that. Click on save. Maybe let's close this thing here. And we need to add a little bit of padding to the top and bottom, otherwise it's too close again. So go to options, styling, and deselect that. I'm gonna set in 5% to the top, 5 to the bottom. Okay, and then click on save. Okay, I'm gonna close that first save it and close the builder and everything looks awesome okay so congratulations we've pretty much finished building our blog but there is still one thing that i do want to show you guys and it's really really important so go to your about page and basically what you'll see here is your background image okay and if people resize that or when people are viewing on mobile you'll see that the image, you won't be able to see the people anymore. Okay, it'll still be parallax, but you won't be able to see the people. Now, I'm gonna make sure that um, it is more responsive. So, uh, what you'll need to do is turn on the builder. I'm basically just gonna show you how to do it. Okay, and then click on own. And then you need to duplicate that uh, entire row. Okay, so below that you'll have the exact same row, all right? But for the first row, you want to click on options here and you want to click on visibility tab, okay? So for the first row with the parallax image, you don't want it to appear on mobile devices because it's not responsive, so you want to hide that. So you want to click on save. So you want to scroll down to the second duplicated row and click on the row options here and then click on styling and instead of parallax scrolling, select full cover. And basically that full cover is a static image, so it doesn't parallax. And that resizes a lot uh, better for mobile. So click on visibility tab, okay? You want it to show for mobile, but you don't want it to show on tablet or desktop, okay? Because the parallax image will show for that. So you wanna click on save, and then save again, and then close the builder and let's look at the image and let's slowly resize it okay the parallax image is still active i'm going to scroll down down okay now we're on mobile devices and that image is full cover and basically a static image and it's a lot more responsive as you can see okay that's really awesome and there's one last thing okay so if we actually go to the home page and we resize the home page 
um, you'll see that the text is a little bit too big. See, it just goes over the screen and that's not very good. So what we need to do to fix that is to go to customize. And then basically uh, what you can do is Themify options will automatically pop up. Click on headings. This is our heading one tag. So what we need to do is you can click on the styling on the bottom here for mobile. Click on that and then click on heading one and you can actually change it to a different size so 50 pixels okay and this is specific for mobile devices only okay if you click it back to the desktop then it will be 80 click it back to the mobile it will be 50 okay so you can save that in here and if you want to style it for the tablet you can as well so you might want to change that size to maybe 75 just a little bit smaller save it and basically you can do that for your whole entire website okay but generally everything else is pretty responsive already okay so you don't need to do too much to uh, your website so let's close that okay so congratulations for finishing this tutorial and building your blog um, if you've enjoyed this tutorial then make sure to give it a big thumbs up if you have any questions uh, make sure to drop it down below in the comment section and I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible um, also make sure to subscribe to my channel for more videos okay thank you for watching and see you guys later